Hi everybody, my name is Matt, aka Ski Rathbun, and I'm here with a review for Shovel Knight. So today we're going to be reviewing an amazing little indie game available on Steam for about $15, as I said, called Shovel Knight. Shovel Knight is an 8-bit style side-scroller based around a plucky little horn knight with a shovel for a weapon. The game's options are fairly basic, so you shouldn't need too much consideration beyond screen resolution, so you can pretty much jump in and start playing right away. Shovel Knight isn't just grabbing the 8-bit style for graphical purposes, but it also uses the gameplay elements of the 8-bit era. Instant death holes, secret passages, and challenging enemies are extremely standard as you traverse through this fun little world. Your basic attacks are a standard shovel swing, striking enemies to your side, and you can also hold down while you're in the air to do a shovel drop, which is similar to Link's down B sword drop attack from Super Smash Bros. For anybody struggling with the game at all, this attack quickly became my go-to for beating most encounters and enemies, as it was extremely potent and effective. The game has very few puzzles and is fairly straightforward. There are a few skillfully challenging areas requiring you to make some precise bounces, but overall nothing most gamers will struggle to handle. However, that's not to say you aren't going to die. When you die, your body spits out three bags of gold which can be recovered if you're lucky and you make it to that point again without dying. Unfortunately, most of the time when you die, it won't be from your health bar reaching zero. You actually get quite an abundance of health, so most of your deaths will be one-shot kills from things like spikes or getting knocked into pits, making your financial recuperation somewhat difficult. Very early on, you're going to want to focus on maximizing your health as having extra life bars makes most encounters significantly easier, almost trivial at times. Make sure to wander around and speak to townspeople once you pass the introductory level. There are some fun mini-games to explore and some bonus gold or feats aka achievements to unlock throughout the town. Townspeople help you unlock bonus ways to earn gold which lets you earn upgrades quite a bit faster if you complete their little challenge requests, sometimes even just selling them some music notes. Now in terms of upgrades for the game, you're going to start with two options. One to increase your health by buying meal tickets from the guy underneath the cook and then giving those to the cook to cook you a fancy little meal to bump up your values. Or you can upgrade your mana capacity by speaking to the mana girl opposite the cook and paying her directly. Both of these are pretty useful to max out early game and will be your two main places to dump your cash until you arrive at the second town of the game. At the second town, you'll have the option to buy different types of armor and three upgrades for your shovel. Honestly, I was excited for the weapon upgrades, but I found I didn't get much use out of them, so I wouldn't feel the need to rush for them immediately if you still have other purchases left to make. I did enjoy the armor upgrades, but eventually just stuck with the golden armor that makes you do flashy jumps because I had run out of the need for money pretty quickly into the game, and most of the other armors don't make any sweeping changes on how you play. Upgrades aside, there are also a plethora of unlockable items. Think Mega Man gun upgrades. You get different types of weapons you can use your mana on that allow you to protect yourself or open up additional offensive capabilities. These are fun, and honestly most of them are pretty useful, but most players will probably end up choosing one or two of their favorites and sticking with those. Personally, I found the Invincibility Amulet was a perfect fit for me and stuck with it for the majority of the game. I only used the offensive spells for a few of the final bosses and relied mostly on my shovel beyond that. The level design in Shovel Knight is absolutely fantastic. The levels are usually built around a theme that is encompassed with the boss's specific knight style. For example, the Propeller Knight has a level full of fans and floating platforms, making movement one of the challenging factors of reaching the end. The Polar Knight, however, kicks snowballs and has an entire level covered in ice and snow, while his enemies attack by throwing snowballs and snowflakes. The themes are great because they add a good amount of variety and are generally always fun. The boss fights are unfortunately a bit easy once you gain that abundance of health. However, there are extremely interesting and well-designed fights that are a lot of fun despite the difficulty being a little bit simplistic. There's always some new mechanic coming in, and I couldn't provide a better comparison for the game than fighting through the boss battles on Mega Man. As a matter of fact, I'll make the bold statement that Shovel Knight is basically Mega Man with a shovel, and I could not personally be happier about that. The real charm of Shovel Knight isn't purely from the enjoyable gameplay, but from the NPC interaction. There's just something about a giant apple fish doing a happy dance for you that brings a smile to my face. I'd be pretty happy saying that was the only ridiculous NPC in the game, but rest assured you will encounter one after the other. The horses prancing through the cities, holding up their dresses, and hilarious dialogue will put you in a great mood for the duration of the game. I promise. After completing a level, there's often a dream sequence, where you get to play a little mini-game and it mildly progresses the story. I don't think this type of game is overly reliant on the story, but Shovel Knight has a nice charming little tale, but nothing overly deep or incredibly in-depth. Its fantastic gameplay is shined through as the most important factor, but the story was there to support it when required. The game itself, however, isn't straightforward going from A to B to finish. There are random encounters that can be difficult to avoid as wandering knights will join the map and challenge you to combat should you meet on the road. It's not an overly critical gameplay element, but it's just a nice little addition that shifts the monotony of dragging through levels and offers a bit of reprieve when you enjoy an unexpected encounter. The fights are fun, the controls are smooth, and I've said almost nothing negative because there's extremely little that I didn't just love about this game. But it is a review, and nothing can reach perfection, so here are a few of my negative points regardless. First off, when you get struck by an enemy, your character model basically vanishes, as it flashes to signify that you've taken damage. Sometimes you vanish entirely, making it extremely difficult to tell where your positioning is. More than one time, I fell to death in a hole because I was extremely unaware of where my happy little shovel knight had gone. This is clearly a little bit irritating at times. The default control scheme needs to be changed ASAP in my opinion. If you're using a controller and you're not keeping the joystick perfectly level at all times, it's going to often change your basic attack into a magical attack. The second that I changed the input from holding up for magic attack to its own button, the controls got significantly better to use. 
Another issue was that in certain parts of the game there was graphical slowdowns, which seemed odd for having such an extremely high-end gaming PC running an 8-bit game. There should be no shortage of extra power for my hardware, and the game should not chug along at any point in time. However, I kept experiencing this regardless. My final negative point is probably more personal preference than anything, but I think the boss fight should be a bit more challenging. The levels were fun, and I don't mind having infinite continues allowing you to progress through the game, however, personally, I enjoy having a bit more of a challenge when it finally comes to the end of the level and you're up against the boss fight. New Game Plus is supposed to bring a higher difficulty, so we'll have to see how that feels, but for the first run through the game, they're a little bit too easy in my opinion. And that's pretty much everything negative that I have to complain about. I honestly thoroughly enjoyed Shovel Knight, and I want to recommend it to anybody who hasn't given it a try yet. It's really just fun, and if you're checking out this review because it's on sale somewhere and you're trying to make up your mind, it is absolutely a no-brainer. Click buy. The game's ending was alright, but for me personally it felt a little bit too simple. If you want a good challenge, run through the game without acquiring all the items or health power-ups, but once you get them, you're pretty much going to be an unstoppable force aside from the odd pit or spike giving you a one-shot kill. All in all, I got about 4 or 5 hours of fun out of my first playthrough through the game, and I will definitely play through it again. I hope you enjoyed it as much as I have. Thanks for watching my review. My name again is Matt aka Skier Rathbun, and I'm here bringing you a Shovel Knight review with Gaumi XP. Make sure you subscribe to the YouTube channel and follow me on Twitter at MattSkiar. Thanks for watching.